A lot of salespeople don't do this, which is why sales, you know, why a bunch of leads get caught up in the pipeline. Because if you're not tagging leads from cold to warm and you have a hundred leads within your pipeline, no wonder they're getting stuck because you don't know which lead is. You're listening to the Traffic and Funnel Show. What's up? What's up, everyone? Wanted to kick off this part four series of the social relationship management strategy. Uh, if you are a salesperson looking to grow your personal brand, your content strategy, your outreach strategy, your social relationship management strategy, then this is the series for you. Uh, I've turned all of the past four series into podcasts. So we're going to be posting that up to our podcast platform. And the videos are also posted up to our YouTube channel. So if you're looking at the description below, you can find a link to our podcast platforms or our communities like YouTube. Uh, the micro content will be posted across Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. So if you're not following us on any one of those platforms, make sure you follow us there. Uh, but this series is more of a high level advanced series for people who are already on social media. They already have a personal brand. They already have a content strategy and they're looking to really scale that. They may have already done social media outreach. You know, they've already found some leads. Uh, if you've been following along with the series, you can see how we, uh, you know, found leads on social media, finding people who engage with similar content, similar accounts, and they throw those people through a sequence of engagement and just add genuine engagement, add value uh, to those people's posts. And these people will eventually reach out to you. Social media is really cool because you have that trust barrier broken where uh, people trust you a lot more on social media. So uh, if you are struggling to find high quality leads, social media is a great place to start with that. Um, there's multiple different ways to find leads online, like advertising and um, other forms of marketing. But uh, social media outreach has been one that's worked really well for me. Uh, and I know it can really work well for you. So as far as um, to kind of recap on what we talked about last week with social media outreach, um, social media outreach is really cool, right? This, I'll, I'll kind of describe one campaign that I didn't describe last week. Um, we uh, had this product where we had a, a workout client who sold, you know, proteins and things like that. So, uh, you know, as an e-commerce product, so they just wanted to get in front of more people who sold protein products. So we found certain accounts like, you know, one stop nutrition, um, you know, gym shark account, accounts like that, right. That were in the fitness space, even some fitness influencers, things like that. And all we would do is engage with those followers content. So the people who liked and commented the most on those posts, we would then engage on the people who liked and commented. So they would come over to the e-commerce platform who had the workout products and things like that. And they would engage with, um, with that content, they would DM them, and then it would be able to start conversations, right? So it's just one form of advertising when you're looking at social media outreach. Um, so and a second way, besides just looking at the inbound, if you're doing outbound engagement, just looking for inbound, you can also just uh, send a message, right? So if you're engaging with someone and you know, you're not just looking for followers and doing audience building and doing more like attraction marketing and inbound marketing, you could just DM them, uh, you know, engage on a couple of the posts, follow them on day one, engage with them on day three, and then day five, maybe, or day seven, you leave a comment and day 10, you finally DM them, right? So they've gotten used to you. Um, they've seen your posts. They, they know who you are. You've kind of warmed them up a little bit, right? So that would be a, almost a similar way of um, someone coming onto your website and they get, you have the Facebook pixel on your website, right? Um, then after they leave your website, you know, your advertising can kind of follow them across the other platforms that they go on. So you'll kind of notice if you go on Gymshark's website, then uh, you'll start seeing more Gymshark ads on your Instagram feed, on your Facebook feed, in your Google feed, um, when you're searching for things on Google. So uh, this is just one way to make sure that you're staying in front of your audience and you're staying relevant, right? And people trust a person a lot more than a brand. So uh, that's why it's super important to build a personal brand on social media. Influencer marketing is bigger than ever. So if you're an influencer selling yourself and your products for a company that you're at or your own products, whether you're a freelancer, um, anything like that, then uh, it's building a personal brand, a content strategy, and an outreach strategy to make sure you're getting in front of those right people is super important. So with that gym client, 
uh, we ended up, uh, you know, liking, commenting, throwing them through the sequence of engagement. And as soon as we sent the DM on day 10, because we've warmed them up within, uh, you know, 24 to 48 hours, we'd get a 50% plus response rate. And all we did was ask a question, right? So our question was, do you take protein before or after your workout? And we got a ton of people who would respond back, you know, we take it before, I take it after, um, because everyone, you're, you're asking for someone's opinion and everyone loves to give their opinion, right? There's, there's a huge um, social media outreach, um, you know, uh, stigma or, you know, whatever going around that you can just spray and pray, right? It's kind of like the advertising form, but it doesn't work as well. You know, advertising works as you're casting a wide net and, and just, you know, sifting people down that way. But if you're really intentional with your engagement and you reach out to the right people, you don't really have to cast a wide net and do a spray and pray, you know, um, you know, send out a thousand messages and a certain amount of people will respond. If you really personalize your engagement, then uh, you'll get a lot better results, a lot higher quality leads and um, and your higher quality conversations, things like that. So you're, you'll be able to actually help people uh, solve their problems. So when you're looking at a social media strategy, you're asking them a question, they're giving you their opinion, right? They're kind of qualifying themselves along the way. Um, so, you know, people would say they took the protein before or after their workout, and then it just opens the conversation to continue asking them, um, well, what do you do during your workout? You know, how did you, how long have you been working out? Um, so whatever your industry is, whatever you sell, it just kind of opens that door, right? So uh, there's a lot of people who uh, do the connect and pitch on LinkedIn and Instagram and different platforms like that, where they, you know, connect with somebody on day one. And then literally out right after the connection request, they're sending this big, long message. Like I help businesses just like you. And they have a copy and paste template that they just, you know, insert the name or whatever, which works for email marketing. Uh, but it doesn't work as much when you're looking at, um, uh, real uh, outreach that starts real conversations and, and you're looking for higher quality leads and conversations. So um, I definitely suggest uh, asking for their opinion, something really simple, a one sentence message, uh, and then you can kind of, you know, continue the conversation on from there. Um, but as far as uh, finding engaging certain accounts, uh, you want to find people with different segmented lists. So um, maybe you have one for networking, one for podcast leads, um, you know, people you want to bring onto your podcast. And maybe a second one, you have um, higher quality. If you have different personas, you know, you have a higher quality list and a lower quality list. So you can manage this stuff in uh, a spreadsheet. You know, if you have different lists, you can keep track of all of the people that you add in that list, you know, add their social media links to that list. A CRM really helps as well if you want to use something like HubSpot or Pipedrive, um, but there's also other social media tools which are specifically built for social media um, that aren't automated. You don't want any automated stuff out there like Expandy, LinkedIn Helper. These are automated stuff that's really bad for your account. And again, it's not going to be as personalized if you're just automating the engagement, changing the name, changing a few variables, right? Um, it just doesn't come off as genuine. If it has like a company name, you know, there's no spaces in between the company name or, you know, there, there's not as many uh, great things you can do with the syntax, they call it, um, which is that replaceable first and last name and things like that. So uh, if you want to do uh, genuine engagement, um, you, you should create segmented lists and really segment your personas and really um, uh, customize the message that you're sending based on the persona that you're sending it to. So uh, there's great tools, like I said, HubSpot and all that stuff. And uh, Social Cycle is another great tool. That's my tool that you can use uh, to um, do some outreach on social media. Uh, but because we're all about value here at Sales Mentor, right? We just want to help people get better engagement, better sales, and um, overall better social relationship management strategies. So when it comes to finding engaging leads, uh, if, you, if you've ever heard of a funnel before or a pipeline or anything, you have three stages of that pipeline, three stages of the customer journey. Uh, they're a stranger, then they're a lead, then they're an advocate, right? So cold, warm, hot. Uh, so if you're looking to get someone in cold, that's really the outreach, right? You're, you're sending a message, you're engaging with people, they're in that outreach stage. So you want to make sure they're labeled as cold, whether that's highlighting them in the Google sheet or tagging them in your CRM or social cycle, you tag them as cold. And uh, as soon as they respond to the message or they start engaging back with you, maybe they respond to a DM, you figure out a certain trigger, then that would be uh, a warm lead, right? So then you would tag them as warm. 
And you can kind of start to see a lot of salespeople don't do this, which is why sales, you know, why a bunch of leads get caught up in the pipeline. Because if you're not tagging leads from cold to warm and you have a hundred leads within your pipeline, no wonder they're getting stuck because you don't know which lead is which. Um, so it can get uh, really tricky, really fast. So you want to make sure you're tagging your leads and really efficiently making sure you're managing um, where each lead is at within your pipeline. So you can consistently move them through. That's what a strong social media, media relationship uh, management strategy looks like. So once they've maybe scheduled a call, again, you got to figure a trigger uh, of what happens after warm. Maybe you qualify them, you ask them three qualifying questions, and you know you do an if then. If they responded yes to all three questions, or if they responded a certain way to all three questions, then you'd label them hot. Or if they scheduled a call, you know, through your Calendly or through your scheduling, booking a call link, then you would um, label them as hot, right? So again, figure out what that trigger looks like for you. This is just a really simple one. As soon as you, um, as, as soon as you add the leads to a list, you know, you have your dream 100 people that you want to reach out to, uh, you know, maybe uh, 25 or whatever per persona, then they would be all cold, right? And then once they respond, that's usually the trigger that I go with it with, they respond to a message, uh, then that's warm. And so you maybe highlight them orange or yellow and then hot is scheduled. As soon as they schedule a call, you know that they scheduled, then um, they become a red lead. And you can take this, you can add five stages to the pipeline if you want. So, you know, after hot, after they schedule the call, did they show up to the call? Because I know that show up rate is, is huge in sales, right? So if they showed up to the call, then you need to tag them as another you know, like very hot or you know something on top of hot. Um, you can come up with different names for, for um, you can even just say that showed up, right? Um, or interested, right? You can you can say from hot to, to interested. So um, that's one really good way to make sure you're managing your pipeline, making sure that after they schedule, you're following up with them and you're continuing to like, comment, engage, DM, and continue on in the pipeline. Because if you're not continually touching those leads, it's the rule of seven. I'm sure it's a lot more now. Rule of seven came out a while ago. But if you're not if they're not seeing you at least seven times, then they're not as comfortable with, with your offer. They don't know who you are. So you need to get in front of them at least seven times. And so if you're engaging with them and continuing to send them value, like sending them a YouTube link, right? Um, it's, it's really helpful if you come up with a, a script or a form of engagement, uh, you still want to personalize it, right? But it would just be like, send YouTube link. So you'd find a video based on what that leads current objections are. Maybe you have a list of five objections that you usually get. If this lead is struggling with one out of five of those objections, then you'd have a certain, you know, three or four videos that handle that specific objection, objection that you send them. So again, you can handle this all within the uh, a CRM, or you can keep it all in your phone notes, but you just want to keep a database of all of the videos and assets that you can use to continue to make sure that lead is getting nurtured. You're still giving them value and maybe scheduling a follow-up call within 30 days, 60 days. Um, you, you can set up certain follow-up tasks to know uh, when you need to follow up with people. So it's really important that you have a solid strategy that's better than just a notebook or a whiteboard or even a G sheet for that. Um, some of these softwares are super cheap. A lot of them are free. Um, so uh, use one of these that best helps you move leads through the pipeline and tag them. Another way you can do this is uh, if you don't have a lot of time on your hands, if you're an enterprise uh, you know, client that's listening to this, then you can also hire a BDR uh, to do all of your outreach for you. Um, if you have a certain amount of leads or a certain amount of competitors, you can just give them those accounts and they will do the outreach for you on those. So those are great ways to find and engage with similar accounts and make sure you're moving things, people through the pipeline. So um, with, the, with the cold, uh, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm hitting on this from last week. With the cold, you want to make sure that you're leaving genuine engagement, right? You want to warm them up. Like I said earlier, you don't want to spray and pray. You want to really personalize it and, and, you know, leave a long comment. Don't just say nice post or, um, you know, uh, this is great. You know, you don't, you want to leave actually something genuine because that'll help you stand out. And more and more people are doing this, right? So you got to think about supply and demand. If you're doing this now, you're going to stand out more than when people are going to be doing this three to five years from now. So you really need to um, look at the market trends and hop on top of 
bit early because when you're early, you get the best cream of the crop. Um, so make sure when you're doing the cold, genuine outreach, you're doing genuine engagement, leaving a, a, a watching the entire video, talking about something in that video, leaving something valuable, you're establishing yourself as a credible authority, right? So you're uh, not just getting, you know, you're not just uh, engaging with that lead who you're doing outreach to that's in your dream 100 list. You're also basically speaking the language of everyone else who's commented because people who are commenting with that post, let's just say if you are in the gym space or the sales space, other people are going to be interested in sales type of content. So if they click on your profile and you have a decent amount of great content, valuable content, um, high quality photos, you know, just really valuable content, then you're going to be that attractive personality that they're going to reach out to. Right. And so same thing, if you're leaving genuine comments, those people are going to see those comments, click on your profile and, uh, reach out to you. Right. So it's another outbound is a great way to make sure you're still getting attraction marketing. You don't have to put a ton of content out there and rank in the system. You know, a lot of people are spending so much time on reels, which is never going to go away, but it's just going to get more and more competitive, right? It's going to become more and more saturated. If you look at Facebook right now, um, there's over a billion daily active users on Facebook and, uh, it's really hard to rank content organically. So, uh, you know, if you want to be unique out there and actually get your content ranked and make sure people are actually reaching out to you and finding you, uh, comment. There's, you know, when I see accounts with 100,000 plus followers that have less than 30 comments, 30 to 60 comments, you know, if, and, and most of those comments are, this is great. A lot of them are bots, right? Um, a lot of them are people that are in their engagement groups that just comment, this is great. Um, you know, so if you're commenting something genuine about the post, again, not only that person will see it, if it's the influencer, if you're targeting an influencer with hundred thousand followers, but all 60 of those people that comment, um, are also going to see that comment and all the people, uh, that like the photo or see the post and just read through the comments are also going to see your comment. So it's, it's a worthy, um, it's a worthy task to make sure you're giving genuine engagement, long engagement and uh, making sure you're you're putting your best foot forward and your best value forward. The more value you give, the more value you get. So that is the way to do cold engagement. So the second uh, part of this pipeline is warm engagement. Uh, these are the people who have responded to your message. So uh, you really wanna start to ask them personalized questions, right? Um, how long have they been in the industry? Uh, you know, what, what are they most passionate about in the industry? Um, you know, what, what are their biggest struggles in their industry right now? You can kind of see like, these are, these are, uh, for lack of better terms, ammo that you can use, uh, to qualify them, right? You're, you're learning about what their, um, what their, uh, gaps are in their business. So you're, you, you can help them solve those gaps, right? So, or, or you're qualifying them because if it's something that you can't really help solve, if it's too high level, then you, you wouldn't really sell them. Right. And if it's too low level, even there's certain leads who are too low level, then you don't want to waste either of your time. So asking them personal questions, and it can be the same questions every time, right. That's still personalizing the process. Cause you're still learning about them and taking notes, putting it into your CRM and, uh, really moving them through that pipeline, right. That qualification process. So, um, you can either send them free info. If they're a lower quality lead, you might, you might not want to book a call with them. You might want to send them some info to get them plugged into your social media channels. Or if it's, it's a YouTube video, that's not one of yours, then you can just get them plugged in and just give them a piece of value that, um, once, once you give someone value, they look at you as a credible authority. So maybe they remember you, you know, 30, 60, 90 days down the road, Plus, if they're still in the, in the engagement system, since their tag is warm, if you throw them through a, um, through a separate sequence, like short-term follow-up or long-term follow-up, you know, you're going to continue to engage with them over the 30 days. So uh, as soon as they receive value from you, you're continuing to engage, you're continuing to put out valuable content out there when that lead might be in a different place. 30 to 60 to 90 days down the road, uh, because you consistently engage with them, they're going to remember you as a credible authority. You have to remember that competition is huge right now, more than ever, especially with personal brands. Um, you know, 2020 kind of taught us a lot. A lot of people lost their jobs. And so more than ever, there are more freelancers, more salespeople, uh, more people working for themselves, more 1099. So if you're one of those people who are working for yourself and it's up to you, if you're making commissions, if it's up to you, um, how much money you make, then 
make sure that you're doing everything you can to be positioned differently than everybody else who is just like you, um, mm -hmm. who is, uh, you know, someone helping someone else solve a problem in a similar industry. So there's unique ways to make sure you tell leads that you are unique. You are the person to help them solve their problems. And the best way to do that is to give them value of ways that they've never heard it before and in ways that they've never heard it before. And one of those ways is genuine social media engagement. So, um, that is one great way to make sure you're getting high quality leads to your pipeline, moving them through and making sure no leads get stuck. So the last part here, I want to cap this off. This is a shorter training. I wanted to make sure it's as condensed and high value as possible uh, with lots of action items for you guys, because uh, I didn't want to train on too much and have there not be any action items because it can get really overwhelming. So this one is really simple for you high achievers out there. Build your list of Dream 100, reach out to them, tag the people who respond after, you know, going through a qualification process and personalizing the questions, learning about them, whether you send them a link and send them through a long-term follow-up uh, or whether they book a call and you move them to hot, um, then you want to make sure that after the call, you're qualifying them correctly, right? So are they really interested? Are you going to onboard them? If you're onboarding them, you probably want to throw, throw them through a certain engagement cycle where it's an onboarding cycle, right? you engage with them probably a little bit more than leads. So you want to make sure that you're engaging with people so that they stay in your system so that they're stoked and hyped. Maybe you send them a certain amount of, um, of value, right? You have a certain onboarding process to make sure what I call uh, they get the time to value. I try to minimize the time to value as much as possible. And what is the value that they get? It's that aha moment, the value from the program. So that value is different than content value or outreach value when you're giving genuine comments, right? The time to value that they actually get from your program where they, they, they understand it, right? So if you have a coaching program and they get a result, that result would be the aha moment. And then that person sticks for life. So you try to get as many people to get to that time to value as possible. And that's an ever changing thing, right? You might have a uh, hundred people come into your program, but if only 10 people get success, why didn't those 90 people get success? Well, it's because you didn't plug them in right, right? And so uh, one way to make sure you're plugging them in right is making sure that you're giving them the right amount of tools and making sure they don't get stuck in the pipeline. So if you're onboarding them and, and right after the call, you wanna make sure you're tagging them as a customer, um, advocate, something like that, where um, you're, you're sending them YouTube videos, sending them trainings and engaging with them on social media to make sure that they understand their value, right? And it's not just throwing them through an engagement cycle and just engaging with them just because, right? You're, you're engaging with them and you're still leaving valuable comments. You're still making sure that they feel that they're um, a part of the, the group, right? And it's not just you're making them feel that way. You genuinely believe it. That's, that's why you set up these cycles of engagement because you genuinely want to invest your time into these people. And if you're not tracking your time intentionally, then you, you, you're not doing business correctly, right? You need, time tracking is extremely important. Um, so ensure that you are doing that, especially on social media. Social media pipelines can get really sticky really fast, the more leads that you add to it. So ensure that you are tagging people correctly. And what I call ABE, always be engaging. So uh, something that's easy to remember, hopefully <laughs> that's not too cheesy for y'all. So thank you so much for hopping on uh, and I will see you next time, fam. <laughs>